Hello, all you intertweebs. Well, it's another month, so what has Cyberlink done for the PowerDirector 365 users in terms of another update? The answer is that they have been somewhat busy. There were multiple new titles and transitions pushed onto systems near the end of May, and the main program update itself was posted on June the 3rd. Today's video is going to cover just those new titles and transition templates. There will be a second video shortly covering the changes to the program as I need a little time to thoroughly go through all the aspects of the entire program looking for changes. Sometimes I like to find not only what is new, but what did they delete and aren't telling us about. We'll begin by clicking on titles at the top then titles along the left, and then the what's new category on the left side. I'm going to first look at the 40 new Japanese colorful 01 through 40 titles that normally reside in the existing colorful category. Now, don't forget that you can find any of these useful even though the default template thumbnail shows only a display of Japanese characters. Just pay attention to the color and shadowing that you see in the default template as it may show something that you'd like to use in your project. For example, when I click to select Japanese Colorful 02, in the preview window it shows a nicely formed gradient font color with multiple borders around everything. I'm going to drag that title down to the timeline and then I'm going to click on Edit and then Advanced. I'm going to click in the text box in the upper left to change it to say just Test. That is, if I can learn to spell it correctly. Immediately you can see that it shows up in English characters in the preview window, which means it's a title that I might want to use. As I scroll down slightly, look at the font face color and notice that it is a three color linear gradient. Scrolling down a little bit more, look at the border attributes and you will discover that there are three separate borders being used. The first is a black border. If I hit the garbage can icon to remove just this border, you can see in the preview window what is missing when that black border is taken away. I'll hit Ctrl Z to put it back. Now below that is a second border that is white. If I hit the garbage icon again to remove it, you can see what goes away with that border. I'll hit Ctrl Z once again to replace it. And scrolling down just a little farther, we come to the third and final border, a yellow color. Its size is somewhat large at 5.1. It has a blur setting of 20. And the opacity is set to 68%. I'll click the garbage can icon to remove it just to see what, it, what is actually getting removed in the preview window and then I'll hit Ctrl Z to replace it. Now I'm not going to make any other changes in the advanced title editing window so I'll click OK to close it. I'll also close the title editing window and return back to the main window. As you look at all of these Japanese colorful titles and any others using Asian fonts don't be so quick to want to click on any one of them and select the option to delete from disk just because you may not normally expect to use Asian fonts in your project. As I've just shown, when you edit the text, it will appear with your English font characters. Now scrolling down to the end of the new Japanese colorful titles, there are 40 new titles named Arrow Text. 01 through 40. These reside in a newly created category called Pointer. All of these new titles include a graphic image that looks like some kind of pointer or directional arrow. For example, when I click on Arrow Text 04, 
it seems to indicate information with various arrows. Let's take a close look at that title to see how it was made. I'm going to drag it down to the timeline and click on edit. The first thing I'm going to do is change the text to read, look here. If I click play in the preview window, notice the arrows have motion as does the text. I'm curious to see how that is done, so I'm going to click on advanced to see the details. On the left side, there is nothing special in the Properties tab, just a font choice and color choice. So how do the letters move? If I look at the timeline on the right side, there are no animation assignments visible in that text box. I'm still wondering, how do the letters move? If I scroll up in the timeline slightly, I can see that there is a 04 PNG file. And that accounts for the arrows and their motions. Now, notice that before I select that graphic line, it shows default locations for any potential animation assignments. If I actually click on that graphic line, those animation assignments go away, meaning that no actual animations are assigned to this element. I'll reselect the text line but there are no animation assignments visible here. So, why do the letters move? I'll then click on the Animation tab at the top of the left side. In looking at the In Animation, the No Animation choice has been selected. If I click on the Out Animation, and once again, the No Animation choice is also selected. I'm still wondering, just how do they make the letters move? Well, this is a good example of the loop animation technique being used, and something I wish Cyberlink could make more apparent in looking at the text box on the timeline. There are visual indicators for an in animation or an out animation when they might be applied to a text box, but nothing is readily apparent to indicate that a loop animation might be applied. I'll click on the loop animation on the left, and you can see the enlarge letter animation is being applied. This means it just keeps looping over and over regardless of how long the duration of this particular text box is set for. And now for the secret method number 38 of how you can easily tell if a loop animation is assigned to a text element. All I have to do is just hover the mouse over the text element in the timeline and it says enlarge letter. I'll click OK to exit the advanced editing window and I'll also close out the editing window to return back to the main window. Back in the What's New category, I'll continue to scroll down through all of the arrow text titles until I come to 20 new titles called Typing 01 through 20, which reside in a new category on the left side called Typing Effect. Now, these are all similar in constructs to the Japanese colorful ones, as they include some special attributes applied to the text and usually at least one small graphic. So that's 40, plus another 40, plus another 20, for a total of 100 new titles added this month. Now, let's look at what's new for transitions. I'll click Transitions at the top, and then what's new along the left side. There are 10 new gaming titles, 0, 1 through 10, but for the first time that I know of, Cyberlink is splitting up the normal distribution of the same named transition and spreading them into several different categories. For example, there are two of the new gaming transitions to be found in the Basic category, two more in the Special Effects category, five in the Social Media category, and one in the split category. 
I have no idea why they are doing it this way now, and the only way to see all possible 10 transitions at the same time after they eventually leave the What's New category would be to do a search for gaming at the top. Then all 10 of them will appear at the same time in the search results. In addition to the gaming transitions, there are 10 new ones called Tech Savvy 01 through 10. But, once again, they are spread into different categories. There are six residing in the basic category, three in the special effects, and one in glitch. Once again, the only way to see all ten at the same time is to enter tech in the search box. I did finally notice one other change, although this might have come about due to one of the last mini updates given in May, and I never noticed it at that time. I'll click on Media at the top menu, then Video Generator on the left side, and then Image to Video on the left side. There are now 49 different templates available with the latest to be added are mostly under the Her Vibe and Figurine categories that are shown above the templates. Now, this option to display according to these categories seems new, but once you select one of these categories, I find it impossible to unselect from these choices. You cannot go back to display all of them at the same time. And no, the choice on the far left where it says all does not display all of them. That is to select both male and female templates. It probably should read both to avoid confusion. But once again, is this lack of ability to redisplay all of the templates at the same time a bug or is it a feature? So that's the extent of all of the new templates pushed onto the PowerDirector 365 systems for June 2025. 100 new titles and 20 new transitions and maybe some image to video templates. The second part of this June update covering major program changes and new features being added will be coming up very soon. Make sure you click on subscribe and that little bell icon so that you will receive a notification when a new video is posted. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.